Hornstein, uh, program officer at the Weinberg Foundation and part of the um, Fed Lab planning team for this track. Um, and welcome to the Small Community Success Factors uh, Bright Spot session. You probably could tell that by Jane's beautiful uh, starting slide. And um, this is your second uh, this is your second bright spot, as you know. So um, we have limited time. I'm going to hand it over to Jane Ginsberg, who's the president and CEO of Jewish Family Services in Northeastern New York. So um, as I uh, mentioned earlier, I am going to speak as quickly as I can to try to get everything um, that I wanted to share out. But please don't hesitate to interrupt me if there's anything that you wanted to ask. Or, um, or chime in on. We have been um, really, as I mentioned, and it's a little bit corny, but um, I chose this particular slide design because right now we are in the process of um, just getting ourselves off the ground and we are truly, truly painting this whole um, masterpiece as we're presenting it. That's what I had said before and it's, and it's corny, but it's true. I started at JFS last August. So I've been um, with the agency for about 14 months. And when I came on board, we were um, going through a bit of a transition period where we had, we've been in the community for 166 years, but really had gone through so many different iterations of identity and how we were serving the community. Always, of course, with the primary mission of serving the most vulnerable in our community, but how we were doing that what, um, certainly had varied. And, um, but we, there are so many wonderful players in our community that it was clear to me that we, it just was a matter of getting our ducks in a row and figuring out who was doing what and what the priorities were and how, where we fit into the mix to make sure that we could help move um, our agenda forward. So as I mentioned, I'm with JFS of Northeastern New York, our Jewish Federation is a key partner. In fact, we actually, as I was saying in our earlier one, we just moved our offices on Friday and we moved into the to the Federation building. So um, we um, have been great partners and we are really grateful to them for all of the support and um, at every different level. Our Bethlehem Chabad is one of, we have lots of different um, various Chabad organizations in our region and our Bethlehem Chabad has two different programs that I wanted to talk about today. One of them is a loan program that um, one of um, the, the folks there who is actually also a part-time staff member of JFS and a former board member of JFS and she's amazing, runs a small grant and loan program for those who are less fortunate, who just need emergency funding for um, the, the smaller needs, whether it's um, dental needs or medical or car or maybe um, something else going on, you know, usually smaller, smaller needs, but helping them and providing them with some, either a grant or a loan, depending on what their capacity is. Um, and um, she's been doing that for many, many years. And I'll talk about that a little bit more uh, later. We have also the Shalom Food Pantry that comes out of the same um, Chabad organization. They run a kosher food pantry that has been delivering um, food, wonderful um, packages of kosher food throughout the region monthly before the pandemic um, and then bi-monthly uh, since the pandemic hit. And their um, capacity has, I think, really quadrupled um, since since this all began. I mentioned also the Vat HaKashruth, the capital district, our kosher supervision agency, Rabbi Bomzer, who was just on our previous um, session for uh, at least a bit, has been an integral member of the community with his knowing everybody and his finger on the pulse of everything in the community and has really been integral in making sure that the services that we're providing, um, A, that because we're the Jewish um, agency providing the services, A, that they're kosher, but really that we have this great touch point. He's just been um, a player. And, and I mentioned the Albany County Department for Aging is not the only county department, but they've been an integral player because the second that we said we wanted to get in the space of addressing poverty in the region, addressing food insecurity, they jumped up and down and raised their hands and said, we want to um, be in this with you. So before uh, the pandemic, We've been providing transportation for Jewish seniors um, to for all of their essential needs, for their medical needs and physical therapy, et cetera, and dental, and also to take them grocery shopping and accompany them to some, um, it, it was more than just transportation, it was kind of transportation plus. And um, to then identify 
of those folks who was really maybe having some issues? Where were um, there, if, if there were concerns, um, where were they? Our drivers would talk to them and then just find that there was something going on with them. Either sometimes it was a memory issue or sometimes it was a, it was a health or family or, or financial need. And then they were able to refer them to our case management team to help them with the support that they needed, the guidance, the assistance um, to help them really be able to address whatever was going on with them. And of course, as we all know here on this team, I'm sure there are many different issues and it could be anything. As I mentioned, the, the other partners, the Shalom Food Pantry and Bethlehem Loan Fund before, um, what they'd been doing, providing the smaller grants and loans and smaller amounts and the monthly donations. And then once the pandemic hit and there was a greater need, we've been referring more people to the loan fund as we get our ducks in a row. And I'll, again, I'll talk about that in a minute. In a minute, and the Shalom Food Pantry, we've been um, uh, referring people to them myself, um, who can provide for themselves uh, or, or prepare meals for themselves, but don't have the means to provide for themselves. What we were able to do, as I mentioned, the county, one of our county departments for aging, and now we actually have another one that's signing on, um, was able to immediately jump in and say, we want to make sure that folks in the area are getting what they need. We, they knew that there were people going to kosher congregate meal sites, and there were lots of other folks who maybe we were receiving Meals on Wheels, but they were not actually eating a lot of what was provided for them. They were just taking whatever um, they could from them because they kept kosher. So we were able to immediately launch a Kosher Meals on Wheels program. And as I mentioned before, our um, the, the the head rabbi from our, our VOD, the kosher supervision, was able to immediately identify that there were there was a lot of kosher food from the hospital that was immediately not going to be used, um, going for use because they'd shut down all of their operations except for to address COVID and emergency situations. So all of their kosher food and other we were able to use right away. And then our kosher grocery, we have a kosher store within a store and get that kosher, kosher grocery store to help pre pre prepare, excuse me, our meals and we were able to get it into a regular system where we now use them every single day. At, at um, one point during the pandemic when um, we'd been shut down for some time and able to identify more and more by talking with other rabbis, by talking with other agencies, et cetera, to say, this is what we're doing. Do you have folks that can help? We were serving more than 50 meals a day. And I recognize that for many communities, that's not a lot, but for our community, it's a smaller community and we were able to identify them and provide and have volunteers go pick up the food and deliver for them, that was a lot. And it really was so meaningful um, for folks. We were then able to wean a lot of people off of the prepared meals if they didn't feel that they needed prepared meals. And we do, and we've been doing a lot of grocery shopping for people. Um, and we have a system worked out for that where we again have wonderful volunteers who are doing the shopping. And then we also have a produce plus that we're coordinating with the Shalom Food Pantry to, um, they're securing food from the food bank and other, um, other vendors are providing food at cost. So it's not just produce, it's produce and protein and dry goods and giving people a beautiful package of food that they're able to get every other week. And if families can drive and come get it or some um, folks will come and get multiple for their, their friends who've already signed up for it. And we're delivering to those who don't have transportation and who are homebound and um, or a little more frail, they can provide for themselves, but or have aides or family members who can do the cooking for them, but they can't access the food themselves. So we have volunteers come and deliver throughout the entire region every other week, um, and it's and they come and help prepare. So there you see a picture of actually our director of essential services doing the produce shop, and we were doing it at the outside at the JCC that's providing space for us in an. Um, underneath the pavilion. So it's everyone's socially distanced, it's safe, we wear masks, and yet we're able to do the important work that needs to be done. Then I mentioned beyond the village, we've actually just received funding to expand our case management for those who are our food recipients or past recipients or whomever, um, and others for lower income renters. We've got lots of different lower income rental units, buildings, big buildings in the area, and identifying folks within these buildings um, working with um, between our our staff and also and our certainly our volunteers and property managers and others who can identify and say these are folks who really need help and attention. Can you help work with them to help avoid crazy situations. So that's where we get here, which is our next big 
dream where we're putting together, um, at least in, in the infancy stages, a financial assistance program. And this will be a collaboration between all of these different agencies and more um, because we have others at play through a new um, alliance that's just, um, again, a few years old in its infancy stage, but funded through a federal stream of funding to help people avoid crises by referring to other community-based organizations where they, we can identify exactly what the services are that we offer and then refer back and forth um, and, are, and can be incentivized sometimes through those referrals, but really helping to make sure that our clients can get the services that they need and then also get the um, attention uh, and, and keep them out of crisis situations. So it's providing all of these services and more um, to them. And, and we can make sure that, that the folks who are really needing the financial assistance on top of the case management or the transportation, et cetera, are also getting that financial assistance. I mentioned before that we had this small community loan fund, but um, the um, champion of that loan fund and, and the administrator of that who um, I think I mentioned is also a part-time JFS employee and a former board member um, knows that it's bigger, that there are so many needs in the community and we have been getting so many more calls as I'm sure so many of you have as well. And we are now putting our, um, our ducks in a row so we can have a proper program that is um, organized and thoughtful and um, legally put together in all of those different pieces to make sure that we can um, move forward with this. We're using um, a grant from our national association who uh, has provided consulting for us to help think through what it is we need to do to get this together, to address the poverty needs in our community. Now, as I mentioned, we are still light years away from where we need to be for our community, but it is working. And it is working locally because um, for a few of the following reasons, and I know we're talking about the success factors, so I have a few of them mentioned at the bottom there, but um, one is because we're a small community, and I think that many of you are as well, we know each other. For the most part, our agencies, especially our Jewish agencies, know each other. And we've realized that even more so in the last few months that we must work together and that we know that we'll accomplish more by working together because territorialism is not an option. We don't have that luxury here in such a small community. It doesn't make sense for us to duplicate our efforts. And ultimately, the constituents and certainly the donors are happier when they see the collaboration, when they see that we're working together and each of us is doing our part to complement that puzzle, kind of that little puzzle that um, image I put in in the earlier slide, we're all fit, fitting together so we can make it all work and each of us um, is, can do our part to make sure that we can meet the needs of those who um, who are the most vulnerable in our community. And there are so many others who are still, um, we're you know, continuing to have conversations with United Way and the major, the regional food pantry um, organization and just so many others who are doing really wonderful work, how we can continue to work together. But when I say why it's working, Federation also has our backs and that is huge. So the fact that they have given us um, really the green light, but also said, we're going to help find you funding. It's not just that we're going to encourage you to do this and we're going to send people your way, which they absolutely do. And we are always welcome them with our open arms and ears, um, but they are absolutely supportive with our funding and will continue to help support um, our efforts with the continued fundraising and joint fundraising and, and collaborative conversations. And that is huge for us and, and I hope for so many of you as well. And I mentioned there's so many more because we have all of these success factors that have been identified that we're talking through right now and today. And I think that they're really brilliant. Our community has been talking through them, maybe not using all of these exact terms, but it's what exactly that we're doing. We are doing virtual program delivery for many um, different ways. And right now, actually, we purchased tablets and are getting folks hooked up with new systems for, for um, to, to make sure that A, they have Wi-Fi, but that they have tablets and training on how to use a tablet so they can be more connected. And the advocacy, I mentioned we work for with our county office for the aging. Well, obviously um, we have, there are many actually county offices for the aging and we are now working with um, four of them, but there are so many other agencies that we need to be working 
um, with and advocating for our folks. And it's not just the counties, it's everyone. It's advocating for our, um, our constituents with all of the different funders and other constituents so they can make sure that they understand what the cross um, needs are. There's so many more, and I think that all of them, as we can identify all of them, and, and um, ultimately that will lead to greater communities, small community success. But, um, and the other thing that I, I didn't mention um, on the slide, but I wanted to also mention, I mentioned on the earlier um, presentation was one of the things that has been so significant for me and um, and I and I know for our agency has been our connection and affiliation and support of our national association. So the National Jewish um, Human Services Association has been integral for me. I have been, I participate in all of the um, affinity groups and, and weekly meetings between the C-suite folks, et cetera, to help bounce ideas off of one, or one another, ask questions. The national CEO, Ruben, is amazing. And there's just a wealth of information and support um, to be offered. And I hope that either all of you are, are connected or, um, either, or will connect for sure, or that there are other um, support organizations that you can also go to for your um, just for your agency's ability to move forward. So um, with that, um, I will stop there and see if there are any questions, conversations. I know I rushed through it and I apologize. I was trying to make sure that I could um, get to everything. And if we have time, I'd also love to hear what you guys are doing too. Um, you know, as I mentioned- Here we have. You know, I, I was just gonna say we have a couple minutes. So if, if folks have, um, you know, one or two questions or comments. And again, if anyone has any, if you guys are working on things or there's something that's percolating, um, I'm always very interested because clearly we're in a growth phase. I just have a question. If you're working with other congregations outside of Chabad, Yes, absolutely. So none of the other congregations have specific programs, but actually um, I had been welcomed. Now they've gone to monthly meetings. Our board, we have a, a local, um, a regional board of rabbis that was meeting. They used to meet, um, I think quarterly, and then they went during the pandemic, they went to every week. And so I was able to be on those meetings as was the CEO of Federation, which was so helpful. So we were in weekly touch with as many rabbis as participated in that meeting to have conversations and apps, and then also with our, um, our, you know, and then Federation also convenes meetings for the executive directors as well. So we have, we had regular meetings at least every other week with everyone. So yeah, as many congregations as participated, I was on, um, or our board chair was on every meeting and um, could really make sure that we were getting the word out about what we were doing, but also hearing from them about what they were, what they needed. For example, mm -hmm. Something that doesn't address poverty, but it's certainly significant, is that there was a great need for a more organized bereavement program in the mm -hmm. in the region. Um, so we've just hired someone with an expertise in bereavement who will be will be launching a more organized bereavement program. So, but yeah, so there they and that's where of course a lot of our recipients of the Meals on Wheels came from referrals from the um, congregations. Wonderful, thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Um, well, uh, first of all, just want to thank uh, Jane for a wonderful presentation. I know that um, I got a lot out of it. I'm sure that um, you all did too. And luckily for me, I had the chance to hear it twice. So I think it's <laughs> up. Um, so uh, thank you and thanks to 